We're seeing a radical collapse of Christian culture in the world today. Humanity is losing its bearings, its direction, because it's walking in the dark. A lot of people aren't seeking God sincerely. God wants to give a gift to the human race through Jesus. In Him there is no darkness. In God alone is light. In God alone is life. He wants to live His life in you and through you and extend it to the whole world. To be Christian means to live by the Spirit, to walk by the Spirit. That's what Christianity is all about, is saving people. Jesus is inside knocking on the door. He wants to come out. He's alive. He continues to save. The kingdom of God is at hand because the king is on the throne. Hey, welcome to another week of the choices we face. You know, last season we had a, a guest named Bob Lesnevsky, also known as Righteous B, and that was a great interview with him, a great story. He works with an organization called Dirty Vagabond Ministries, and at the end of the program he sang a very moving song. And this year we have Kelly Pease, <laughs> who also works with Dirty Vagabond Ministries. Her husband's in charge of their hands-on work with inner city kids in Steubenville, and Kelly is a recording artist. She has several CDs out. Kelly Pease, Come Alive. Kelly Pease, Freedom Song. And we're going to ask her at the end of the program after we do the booklet spot to uh, sing one of her songs for us right here on camera. Kelly, welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Hey, tell us a little bit about your story, you know? Sure. Well, I grew up in Louisiana. Oh, no, another Louisiana person. <laughs> yeah. That's five this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five, yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. We are all over the place. <laughs> and um, I actually grew up, my parents, my mom and my stepdad were involved in a lot of ministry, a lot of youth ministry. and in a really vibrant, you know, charismatic community. And, and that was just the best thing for me, I think, just such a gift for me. And um, my parents were divorced when I was really young and, and tragedy kind of struck when I was uh, almost 10 years old. My dad was killed in a train wreck. Yeah, I see that this album is dedicated to him, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, the Roger Pease, yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was kind of like uh, the moment, you know, when you just feel like everything really shifts. and. And I think as I got older, um, what I realized was just that God had been there, you know, that he had always been there, that he had been faithful. And mm -hmm. that was really kind of the platform, I think, for my, my faith walk and for everything that's come after, you know, in my own ministry and mm -hmm. in my life now, just knowing that God is faithful. Yeah. Well, what happened uh, as you were growing up? You know, your dad died when you were 10 years old. And uh, where, where did the Lord take you? Well, I think at that time I kind of dealt with that the way that a kid does. But what happened was as I started to get older, especially in high school, I actually met a group of kids at uh, this new high school that I was at, and they were all just in love with Jesus. You wow. know, it was really well, that remarkable. was a blessing, wasn't it? It yeah. really was yeah. because I had grown up in my faith, but I really didn't understand that God wanted to be personal to me. Mm. And so these teens, when they talked about Jesus, they talked like they really knew who he was, you know, and mm -hmm. it really, it moved me at the time. And I started to just read the Bible. It was as simple as that. You know, I just kind of started to get into the word. And uh, I had always grown up in music, you know, played piano, was in choir, everything like that. And, and so at 14, I started to write songs, you know, that were basically just kind of what God was doing in my heart and, and what was happening in my prayer life mm -hmm. and didn't really know where it was going to go. But it turned into something that I think God wanted to use, you know, and it's just yeah. been kind of an adventure ever since. Yeah. Well, what got you from way down yonder in New Orleans to way up north in Steubenville, Ohio? Well, that is a good question. Um, the <laughs> main factor that brought me to Steubenville, Ohio would be my husband. Uh-huh. Uh, well, tell, tell us about him. How'd you meet him? Okay. Well, um, we met actually at a youth conference when we were teenagers. Down, and, down uh, in New Orleans? or Actually, it was in St. Louis. It was okay. a Franciscan um, University youth conference, and we were both there together. And uh, I guess we were about... Um, 16, 17. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, interesting because we met, but we didn't really, you know, connect. I mean, we kind of yeah. just knew each other and made some mutual friends. And and so throughout the years, we kind of, I guess, you know, kept up with each other a little was, bit. Was he from down south, too? or Actually, he grew up in New York. 
Oh. Upstate New York. So okay. we're coming from like opposite ends of the country. Yeah. Uh, met in St. Louis. He went to the university uh, in Steubenville. Yeah. And I had a lot of friends there because I had done some work with the conferences. And so mm. that's kind of what brought us together. And it's a it's a longer story than that, of course. But uh, we're married now. We have um, we have a six month old son. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Very good. Now you did you do music for years at those Steubenville South conferences? Was that a big part of kind of growing your gift and using your it talents? It was. Or? It was a huge part of. Uh, just come and understand. Okay, tell, tell us what a Steubenville South Conference is. Well, Steubenville does these great youth conferences, and then they decided to expand around the country, and they, they started one in the South, and Bishop Sam Jacobs was deeply involved in all that, I think, right? right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, he, so. he married them. Uh-huh. Is, is that right? That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 He's, he's been chairman of our board of directors for years at Renewal Ministries, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's the Louisiana just, Connection. Yeah, he's like a part of our family. I mean, what a huge blessing to be able to say that, you know, just... Yeah. You know, just it just reminds me of how much God has had His hand on me. You know, mm. even that I would know Bishop Sam. But um, so I was involved in the conferences, and that was a huge part of me just coming to understand worship. You know, or just see like the effect of worship, especially for our young people. You know, and uh, that was really where I kind of came of age in my music. I think. Mm-hmm. What are you seeing when you say you're seeing the impact of worship on young people when you're at a conference? What do you see? Well, I think that, you know, worship, it's really, it's nothing new, obviously. It's, you know, so biblical just that people would, you know, give God worth, which is basically what it is. But I think that it's happening in kind of a fresh and modern way in the church today, especially for young people, I see. And I see it kind of as a response to what's happening in our culture, you know, which as far as, you know, music and our culture and and media, you know, everything is just to the extreme in every way that you could imagine, you know, kind of crossing all these boundaries and and just really pushing, you know, on on everything, you know. And uh, I really see like the modern worship movement for our youth as a response to that as far as just kind of pushing the boundaries of, of how open we can be to God, you know, and to the Holy Spirit and really just trying to be to the extreme in that way, you know. And I just think that music is such a powerful tool. I mean, it has been, mm-hmm. it, it has such a heavy effect on, on the youth culture today. You know, I think that worship music is similar, you know, but just for the kingdom, you know, just that it would open people's hearts to recognizing that God is here, you know, that yeah. He's alive, that He's moving. It's great. I mean, worship is such a countercultural thing right now. Mm-hmm. We're living in a time when our country is becoming more and more secularized. People are denying God and, you know, Pope Benedict talks about there's, we're just drifting away into kind of a desert of godlessness is the term he uses. And in the midst of that, one of the ways you can radically affirm the existence of God is worship Him. Absolutely. And it's yeah. just to affirm His greatness, His majesty, His beauty, His wonder, and let the human heart sing. Mm-hmm. You know, And that's what happens, I think, in a lot of yeah. these conferences. I love listening to the kids just abandon themselves to the Lord in the yeah. context of worship and in the yeah. Eucharist, and it's great. Well, these Franciscan University of Steubenville Youth Conferences are pretty amazing. I mean, like I think it's like 20-something around the country, mm-hmm. and f- almost 40,000 young people come during the summer to these youth conferences mm-hmm. held all the summer. It's, it's a great sign of hope in mm-hmm. terms yeah. of yes. youth's hunger for God and somebody doing something to help help yeah. meet it. You know? you know, we talk a lot in the show, you know, Kelly, about connecting with the Lord and encountering the Lord. And I think worship is a place where young people actually do encounter the yeah. Lord. You know, the Lord inhabits the praises of His people, Scripture says. And when you, the human heart opens up and people who are anointed and gifted like yourself are able to help lead folks into opening their heart to the Lord, great things happen. Tell, tell, tell people what a typical Franciscan University Youth Conference is like. What, what goes on there? Well, the conferences consist of, you know, times of worship, uh, talks, you know, different speakers from around the country come together just to present the message, you know, in in new ways and ways that are, you know, effective with teens. Uh, But also it's very sacramental as far as, you know, adoration and um, confession throughout the weekend. And and the high point is definitely the mass, you know, on Saturday and Sunday. But it's a weekend long event where, you know, teens come from all over the country together and uh, have this experience together, which is powerful to see other kids your age experiencing this. I think that's one of the things I've heard kids say a lot is I never knew so many many other people were giving their lives to God or loving the Lord and they feel very strengthened. Same thing like Mm -hmm. from World Youth Days to come back saying, hey, we're not alone. Right. There's a lot of kids that are 
giving it and it does advice. reinforce i mean it's not so easy you know i'll challenge it just to be a teenager in this culture and everything that's leading you away mm -hmm. from the gospel and how much even though people are plugged in constantly you know to one electronic thing or another there's a tremendous sense of isolation right. loneliness discouragement the young people when you can come together in the lord and experience the love of God coming through others and shared in a kind of coherent reality of the faith together and the sacraments and all that. That's freeing for kids. It's it healing is. and freeing. We know there's a lot more we'd like to talk about. I want to talk about what it's like to be a young married couple today. I want to talk about Dirty mm -hmm. Vagabond Ministries. I want to talk more about your music. But right now we're going to have a little spot actually from Franciscan University of Steubenville. And when we come back, we're going to pursue some of those other topics. Great. It's great to see that the mission of Franciscan is reflected in uh, the academic pursuits of its students. I, uh, I'm double majoring in uh, theology and mathematics. It just helps because in math you can see causality, uh, chain of thinking, and things in the material realm that can be applied to the spiritual. Everyone here really wants to be a saint. You know, there's just no better place to grow uh, in my manhood, to grow in my faith, and to grow in my intellect. Franciscan University is academically challenging and passionately Catholic. Well, we're talking to Kelly Pease today, and Kelly is a Catholic music artist, and she has a number of CDs available, and we're going to let you know how you can get them. And at the end of the program today, Kelly's going to actually sing a song for us right here live on the set. Uh, Kelly, tell us a little bit. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of hard these days, Christian marriage. It's so much under attack. And, and, and here you are with, with your husband and your baby. They're, they're out there in, in the room there waiting to come back and join you. And... Um, what's it like to be a young married couple today? And how did you and your husband come together into Christian marriage? Well, I think for us, looking back, you know, probably the greatest thing that happened for us is that, you know, individually, uh, separate from each other, opposite ends of the country, we were both at a point in our lives made a decision to just say yes to Jesus, mm. you know? And, you know, of course, we went through so many things individually after that. You know, it wasn't a commitment to being perfect or to having all the answers. It was just a commitment to Christ, you know. Yeah. And so when I look at it, it really is all Him that we even found each other. I mean, yeah. my husband grew up in New York. I grew up in Louisiana. And, um, you know, it's just it's just been so life-giving. Not that it hasn't had its struggles, but I actually, he was at school uh, at Franciscan. And I was there to sing at one of my friend's weddings. Mm -hmm. And he kind of caught wind of the fact that I was in town. And he's very, you know, New York, Italian, very like to the point, says it like it is, you know. <laughs> oh, <And laughs> another New Yorker, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, I, girl, I want to marry you. <laughs> and what's more or less like that? Oh, yeah. no. You know, yeah. I'm very Louisiana, it's, you know, the South, very polite. You're a fine of. lady. <laughs> and, you yes. know, yeah. Southern Belle, kind right. of, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I am in town, and I have this number pop up on my phone that I don't recognize. And I answered the phone, I said, hello. And I hear this voice say, Kelly. And I said, who is this? And he said, this is Joey Lombardi and I'm gonna sweep you off your feet this weekend. Whoa, <laughs> yeah, I was just kidding and it was yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna make an offer you can't refuse. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, and, uh, so know, he had decided that he wanted you, huh? He decided and yeah. uh, he kind of, you know, he came to this wedding. It was a wedding that he wasn't invited to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wedding crasher. He yeah. did and uh, that was kind of the beginning of just our getting to know each other, you know? and. Uh, we spent the next months, you know, just... You say, wait, slow down, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. But the great thing was we were long distance, you know, so yeah. for a, quite a long time we talked on the phone. Yeah, you know? yeah. And that was probably the best thing, just getting to know each other yeah. and, and hearing all of each other's stories yeah. and everything like that. But we, uh, I eventually moved to Steubenville because I was just doing music and traveling at the time. And he was working for Dirty Vagabond yeah. Ministries. And... Yeah. Um, so it made more sense for me to come there, and I did. And uh, we really did have a really blessed uh, engagement, you know, yeah. dating relationship. And, and a lot of it, you know, one of the coolest things for us was to be involved in Dirty Vagabond together. Yeah, yeah. It was hey. something that I was kind of, like, scared about at first. Yeah, working with inner city youth. Tell us a little about Dirty Vagabond Ministries and what you and your husband do there. Well, it's, uh, it's a ministry for inner city teenagers. And... Um, it's really meant to be a very incarnational ministry, meaning that the idea is just to like plant yourself in an area, like in an inner city area and just be a presence, you know, among the people consistently, 
you know, and just kind of walk with them and be a part of their day-to-day lives. Mm -hmm. And what that looks like for my husband is that he runs um, like a youth center, Mm -hmm. an outreach center where kids can just come in off the street, you know, and it's really, it's a cool setup. It's, you know, games and music. It looks really, you know, enticing for them and they come in and uh, then it's just starting to do uh, outreach, you know, just relational ministry. And, you know, Tuesday nights would be a a regular youth group night, like with a Bible study, with a message, you know, lots of games and everything like that. Um, Wednesday nights turned into what the kids call Jesus class. Hmm. Uh, But it's really, it's an RCIA program, Hmm. um, which just this past Easter, we had 13 kids become Catholic. Wow. Fantastic. It really was. It was so amazing and uh, moving. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Sunday masses and trips and everything else that you do with, with teens, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. but, you know, in the beginning for me, uh, especially because my parents did ministry, you know, something that I was really blessed by, but at the same time, I came to a point, uh, a little season in my life where I said, I don't want to do anything like that. You know, I, I'm fine with my relationship with God, but I don't really want to open my doors to anyone else, you know? And it just was funny that I fell in love with someone who was doing this like 24 (laughs) seven, this is his life and his job, you know? Yeah. And um, was it hard to join him in that? Or, it was yeah. hard at first because I just wanted my comfort, you know, yeah, I wanted sure. to be comfortable. Yeah. And um, yeah. I really didn't want to get my hands dirty with yeah. that, you know, because yeah. it really is. Uh, and you wanted Joey home at a certain time. Right. And you wanted just yeah. you and Joey together. And right. Not all these other kids. And, right. You know, kids you know. And kids were looking for, you know, adult support, you know, a man in their life or a family. And they just want right. to surround you and. pour themselves into your life, you know, yeah. Exactly. And so it can be overwhelming, but what happened was as I started to kind of slowly, you know, get involved and and be a part of, especially like the Tuesday nights, uh, youth group nights, you know, just seeing them be transformed ended up being so transforming for me. You know, it was almost like meeting Jesus again for the first time, you Mm. know, seeing it through new eyes because a lot of these kids had never really even heard the gospel, you know, and And on top of that, they were so, a lot of, most of these teens, I think, are so just desperate for something, you know, because there's just a lack of of any kind of structure in their life. They come from a lot of tough situations. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, tons of broken families and lots of drug abuse and and problems in school and loneliness Mm -hmm. and everything, you name it, you know. yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, just seeing them change, like, with the hope that, Mm-hmm. you know, of of what it would really mean if, if there was a God who really loved them and really had a plan for them and really yeah. saw them, you know, yeah. and knew who they were. Like watching them come around to that completely affected me. You know, it, it totally refreshed my faith. And yeah. and it just became uh, really such a solid ground for my husband and I as far as our, you know, development as a couple and yeah. in preparation for our marriage. Yeah, like, like disciples together. Right. You know, like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, stand by side by side, serving the Lord together and following the Lord together. It's beautiful. I imagine that's just beautiful for the kids to see a, a, a married couple that loves each other and is staying together and mm-hmm. just seeing seeing the witness of a Christian marriage must be just really, really important for them, to, kind of for them to see what that could be. Right. It's, it's definitely not the norm uh, in their lives and I think in a lot of people's lives these days. But you're right. It just kind of uh, gives birth to, to hope for them. Of, mm-hmm what there might be for them. Yeah. You know, it makes me think about something uh, Pope John Paul II said many years ago. He said, you know, the, the frontiers of evangelization now in the world are the cities, and what's needed in the cities is urban lay missionaries who are populating the cities wow. with the love of Christ. And he said, and they're set on fire with the Holy Spirit and the love of God in, the, in that context. And that's, what's, and that's what you guys are doing. It's yeah. really great. Yeah, right. he, I think he said that up in some Canadian city, didn't he? He did. He yeah. was uh, speaking to the bishops of Ontario at their Adlimina yeah. visit when he was saying, he was talking about the frontier of evangelization years ago was the Jesuit martyrs when they first came. Mm-hmm. He said, well, now the frontiers are the cities of the world, yeah. and we have to populate them with, with Catholic lay people who are caught up in a missionary dynamism, who grasp their baptismal dignity, and they're passionate for being able to take the gospel into yeah. the cities. And that's what you guys yeah. are doing. It's great. I, I know that Dirty Vagabond Ministries and what you're involved in uh, depends on donations from supporters. How, how could people get in contact with you or make a donation? Uh, probably the best way to get in contact is to go to the website, dirtyvagabond.com. 
you know, there's information on D-I-R-T-Y-V-A-G-A-B-O-N-D dot it. com. That's Dirty it. Vagabond altogether dot com. That's and there's it. information there about how they could find out more about the ministry and make a contribution. Yeah. Right. Certainly it's really worthwhile what you're doing. It's really worthwhile supporting what you're doing and uh, I know I, my wife and myself do. We want to continue doing that. It's just mm -hmm. really glad you're there doing what yeah. you're doing. You. Yeah. Kelly, do you, do you see yourself continuing to develop your whole music career? Is that is that something you feel like the Lord's calling you to do and you want to do? And Well, one of the things that I'm most thankful for now is uh, just the simplicity of mind, I think, that embracing my vocation has, has brought me. You know, it's like now I can see so clearly that all that I really know that God is calling me to do is be a mother to my son and be a wife to my husband and uh, everything else is kind of secondary, you mm -hmm. know, outside mm -hmm. of that. And um, so I don't really know what will happen. I think there was a long time when in my mind I saw like, you know, a picture of what I wanted it to be, you know, but the problem was it was what I wanted it to be, mm -hmm. you know, and one of the best things for me has been kind of giving that to God in exchange for what he has for me, you yeah. know, yeah. just just. It's kind of simple now, you know, it's just being home and yeah. loving my family and yeah. just saying yes to whatever he yeah. presents. You yeah, know? well, I think that's great. And he can then do with this what he pleases and how it would be of service to other people. And yeah, right. Good. Well, Peter, uh, it's just encouraging. Yeah. See, uh, yeah. I love yeah. the simplicity of it. You know, yeah. you're just saying it's just simple. It's, uh, you can just sense the peace in your life. You know, I'm, I'm living my vocation. What a wonderful yeah. thing to say. Yeah. I really come to know as a young person. How many young people are just trying to figure out, I don't know what to do, I don't know who I am, I don't right. know where I'm going, yeah. I'm trying this, that, and the other thing. And just to be able to say, you know, I, I actually know who I am right now. Right. Yeah. I actually know, because why? Because the Lord has, has told me, He's shown me. And I'm at peace with that, because my life is in His yeah. hands. And that's really what walking with Jesus and being a Catholic, being a Christian is all about. It's right. just on yeah. a daily basis, just walking in obedience to Him and our vocation and being at peace and knowing I'm in His will. Right. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, so. So many people devalue being a wife and being a mother today, like they feel like you got to be something else, and Kelly has all these other things, but it, it's true. The yeah. most meaningful thing, the most important thing that Kelly's doing is being a wife and mother. I mean, that's, that's super important, and yeah. it's so devalued in our culture, but what's more important than bringing another soul into the world right. and doing everything you can to help that, that, that little person, that little Joey, grow up right. uh, with, with a mother and dad that love him? I mean, that's that's... That's of infinite more value than anyth yeah. anything else. Right. You know, you, you know, because you've done it in your life, and my wife Debbie and I too. We've been involved in ministry from day one. We were both involved. And that's how we met, and we got mm -hmm. married. There's kind of a similar story, and it has its challenges and its ups and downs. But we have been overall blessed by the Lord. Our kids have been evangelized by all the people who hang around. You know, that's I mean, awesome. the people they've, they've they've really had an impact on my children. And I felt early on, the Lord said to both Debbie and I, you know. You give me your worries and concerns. I'll give you the things I want you to do. Let's make an exchange. I'll right. give you these, you give me those, right. and don't be filled with anxiety, just do my will. Mm -hmm. Seek first my kingdom, do what I'm asking you to mm -hmm. do, and I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you, I'll take care of your marriage and your children, and the Lord's been faithful. Yeah, that's really true. Well, Kelly, thank you so much for uh, being with us today, and thank you so much for making these available for those who would like them. How can they get a hold of the CDs? Um, the easiest way would be kellypease.com. Okay. Uh, you can K e l l y p e a s e dot com. That's it. Okay, and they can get a hold of them there. That's it. Well, we're really looking forward to your your song in just another minute. First, I want to tell people about this booklet that I've written that we're making available as a gift. It's called The New Pentecost, and the reason why Kelly and her husband Joey are able to do what they're doing is because of the power of the Holy Spirit. The reason why we're doing this television program now for 25 years, week in and week out, is because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And we need the Holy Spirit in our life in greater abundance and greater measure than ever before because of the challenges we're facing. So we're going to give you the information in just a minute about how to get the booklet. You can go to our website, renewalministries.net. You can call the telephone number that we're going to give you, but uh, send for the booklet. It's going to help you yield your life more to the Holy Spirit. And that's going to be really good for you and for everybody else. So when we come back, we're going to hear Kelly sing. Four popes in a row have now asked us to fervently pray for a new Pentecost. They know that what we need is an outpouring of God's Spirit. I've written a booklet about what this new Pentecost is and how we can personally appropriate more of the Holy Spirit. We'd like to make it available as a gift from us to you. Just call 1-800-282-4789 or go to our website, renewalministries.net. Click on New Booklet and we'll send you your own copy. Come Holy Spirit. 